talking about uh, ICD-10 and medical billing and coding and the need to understand uh, radiology and nuclear medicine, obviously the most common tool that gets used in that area, of course, are simple x-rays. And x-rays, of course, uh, we know have been around for a very long period of time. And they're going to be one of the staples uh, in terms of the physician's capability to uh, gather the information necessary uh, to make a diagnosis of the patient. And x-rays may be used from multiple angles. And one of the, uh, uh, in our terminology associated with the x-rays, you know, we talk about uh, craniocaudal, a view of a structure from head to foot. Uh, that type of uh, scan might be more reserved for an MRI, uh, whereas our X-rays typically get uh, used anterior posterior or posterior anterior or potentially at oblique angles, okay, from the side. Um, your electromagnetic devices, uh, of course, uh, electromagnetic fields are what make MRIs possible, pertain to energy propagated through matter and space. Uh, that's what we talk about with electromagnetic uh, Ion, Greek for going, an atom or group of atoms having gained or lost uh, electrons. And that ion can be uh, traced. And so that's one of the things that, uh, you know, helps in nuclear medicine, the ability to actually trace ions through the vasculature or, um, you know, trace it through the tissues. Uh, ionization or ionize, that's uh, the noun form, ionization or ionize is the verb form. Uh, ion again is an atom or group of atoms carrying an electric charge and ionization is the process of causing an atom or group of atoms to gain or lose one or more electrons. Okay, ionize is the verb form to cause the process of ionization. Okay, mammograms and mammography, they're going to use x-rays to record uh, the tissue of the breast. And ultimately, uh, when we talk about x-rays, we said that you know that is one of the oldest uh, diagnostic techniques of modern medicine, um, that it's going to use uh, light rays, which are not of the visible spectrum, to ultimately penetrate tissue and produce an image. It used to be on film, but now with the advent of sophisticated computer systems, rather than having uh, the, the light pass through and make an image on a film, it can actually do it through a computer system. Digital images, which are very, very quick and require no processing. Um, a mediolateral oblique. Okay, that's where I talked about before where uh, a patient uh, would have an x-ray taken at an angle to view a structure. Uh, next term that we get to is radioactive, spontaneously emitting alpha, beta, or gamma rays. You know, we often hear about nuclear medicine and radiation, but what exactly does that mean? Well, when something radiates, okay, there are going to be some sort of invisible uh, to the naked eye, lights emitted from uh, some sort of uh, radioactive material. Uh, it could be radioactive iodine. Uh, it could be thallium. All of those things um, can be utilized uh, to trace uh, the flow of blood through the tissues You're using a fluoroscope, which is just a specialized type of x-ray device. And we can see live uh, minute by minute images of the flow of uh, radioactive material through the vasculature or through the tissues and see how blood flow occurs, see how tissue uptake occurs. Radiograph, 
Okay. Images made by exposure to x-rays. And of course, that was the old time version of the x-ray being uh, created and therefore uh, had to be developed on film. But now again, that can be done with computer systems. Radiographers, the technologist who performs x-ray procedures. Radiographic pertaining to x-rays. And again, radio, as we know, means radiation. Radiology would be the study of medical imaging. Okay, radiologic is pertaining to radiology, and the person that specializes in radiology is a radiologist. Now, two other terms often associated with um, uh, nuclear imaging and x-rays, radiolucent and radioopaque. Radiolucent, lucent means open, so penetrable by x-rays or other forms of radiation. So that's tissue that the x-rays can actually make its way through. Whereas radioopaque, okay, opaque or opaque means shady, impenetrable to x-rays or other forms of radiation. Radiopharmaceutical, that's where we get into isotopes which may be traced through the body, producing images on a fluoroscope, so we have real-time view of blood flowing through the coronary arteries, for example. Um, so again, that is a field of nuclear medicine related to a product produced by the drug industry that's radioactive. It may be radioactive iodine, for example, or again, or thallium. Uh, all of those are potentially radionuclides uh, which could be utilized in the healthcare setting. Uh, a radiotherapist or radiotherapy. Uh, the radiotherapist is the specialized, excuse me, specialist in the use of radiation in the treatment of patients. Radiotherapy, tra treatment using radiation. Now, a few important things uh, to consider, we talked about these a little bit already, uh, the alignment of the patient when, of the patient whenever an x-ray is taken. Uh, the patient maybe uh, comes to the x-ray department and in the radiology department they get an order that says they need a PA x-ray. That's a posterior anterior Okay. X-rays travel from a posterior source to an anteriorly placed image receiver. Okay. That's the most common chest X-ray. Anteroposterior, in which the X-rays travel from an anterior source to a posteriorly placed image receiver. Uh, lateral view. In a left lateral view, the X-rays travel from a source located to the right of a patient and travel to an image recorder to the left of the patient. And, of course, that would be reversed in a right lateral view. And then we already talked about this one a second ago. Uh, an oblique view, the x-rays travel at an angle from the perpendicular plane and pass behind the heart and lung hilum to the show structures normally hidden in PA and AP views. Okay, Again, that may be very well used uh, to uh, see if there's something going on with the vasculature. Uh, for example, the, the descending aorta or the uh, uh, inferior vena cava, all of those would be occluded by uh, the heart and lungs. So that angle might give the, the physician a greater opportunity to see those structures. Now, fluoroscopy is something that we talked about a little bit ago uh, in passing. Continuous x-ray image is shown on a monitor like an x-ray movie. Okay, and again, that allows real-time imaging. Uh, radio contrast agents must be used, such as barium sulfate or iodine, and they're administered orally, rectally, intravenously, or into an artery and enhance the real-time imaging of the dynamic process, such as blood flow in arteries and veins, Angiography, of course, that would be called. Uh, definitely familiar with that. I looked at a lot of angiograms over the years being in uh, cardiac and pulmonary rehabilitation. You know, we would see the results of a patient after uh, they'd had an angioplasty or been revascularized with a coronary artery bypass graft surgery. 
So we would, you know, very often times in the patient's medical history see uh, their angiograms uh, where a, a fluoroscopy uh, procedure was performed after a radioactive substance was put into the vasculature. There we go. Angiography, uh, radiography of vessels after injection of contrast material. Uh, we know angio, of course, means blood. Graphy is the process of recording. An angiogram is a radiograph obtained by angiography. Angioplasty is the recanalization of a blood vessel uh, by surgery. And of course, uh, with angioplasties now, before one of the biggest issues associated with angioplasties was the patient needing to lie still for six hours while pressure was applied to the femoral artery to make sure that the patient wasn't going to bleed. Well, now they're doing a lot of the angioplasties through vessels in the forearm, and that dramatically uh, decreases the amount of time associated with the procedure because it's relatively easy to apply pressure to that area. The patient doesn't have to be lying completely still. A pressure, pressure bandage can be put uh, on that and makes the process go that much faster. So it's an even less troublesome procedure and helps an outpatient uh, uh, clinic maintain good patient flow. Uh, anteroposterior, the direction of the x-ray beam passes through the patient from front to back. Posterior, of course, means behind. Antero means coming before. Fluoroscopy, fluoro means x-ray beam. Scopy means to examine. So it's examination of the structures of the body by x-rays. Oblique, that comes from the Latin term slanting. Slanting in radiology is a projection that is neither frontal nor lateral. Opaque is Latin for shady, impervious to light, impenetrable, impenetrable by x-rays or other forms of radiation. Of course, bones would be the classic example of radio-opaque structures in the body the x-rays can't pass through it, and so they appear as white structures on an x-ray film. Postero anterior, the direction of the x-ray beam passes through the patient from back to front. And then radio contrast, okay. Contra means against, okay. Radio again means radioactive or radiation, I should say. Agents that make structures stand out in x-ray imaging. Radiopharmaceuticals, radionuclides can be combined with pharmaceutical compounds to perform radiopharmaceuticals, which are labeled with a radioactive tracer. Um, that in turn allows a fluoroscopy procedure to occur, and you can again see it like it's an x ray movie in real time, see these. Uh, ions moving through the vasculature or moving through the tissues and that in turn allows uh, the physician to see how blood flow is moving through the coronary arteries for example or if we use something like barium we can use a barium drink and see how uh, the barium moves through the gastrointestinal system or if it's a lower GI series it might be a barium enema and to see how the barium moves through the large intestine, the colon. Uh, these are some radiopharmaceuticals, technetium 99M, uh, used in 85% of all nuclear medicine imaging studies for bone scans, liver scans, renal function studies, labeling red blood cells, and use as a gaseous or aerosol. Uh, iodine-123 used mainly for thyroid scans. Iodine-131 used mainly for the destruction of thyroid tissues. If somebody has too much thyroid hormone being secreted because of uh, multiplication of the cells due to a benign tumor of the thyroid, it may need to be destroyed. Those cells may need, uh, may need to be destroyed and iodine-131 would be what they would utilize. Gallium-67 is used in positron emission tomography or PET scans for, localize, uh, uh, for localizing infections. 
Indium-111 is used to label and identify the movements of white blood cells. Thallium-201 is used for myocardial perfusion scans and stress tests. That's one I'm very familiar with from my background. Uh, 18F, F, mm, 18F FDG, fludodeoxyglucose, uh, used in the diagnosis and staging of cancer and most commonly in PET scans. So for positron emission tomography, the scanning process produces two opposite traveling gamma rays to be detected concurrently to improve resolution. 18F FDG is injected in intravenously into the patient and the radiation emitted is detected to produce multi-planar images of the body. Tissues such as cancer that are most metabolically active concentrate the 18F FDG more than normal tissue. Cancer cells are going to break all of the rules in terms of stopping when they're supposed to stop and destroying themselves when they're supposed to destroy themselves. And so to maintain that rampant cell growth, they're going to be taking all the oxygen. They're going to be taking all the nutrients to an area. So therefore, they're very metabolically active. And 18F FDG can be easily uptaken by those cells. And that leads to basically an easy find due to this radio pharmaceutical. Okay. Some of our key terms associated with uh, radio pharmaceuticals, photon is Greek for light, a particle of light or other electromagnetic radiation. Positron is Greek for positive element, a subatomic particle equal mass to an electron but with the opposite positive charge. Radionuclide, radio again we know means radiation. Nucleo means nu nucleus, and then ide is having a particular quality, a radioactive agent used in nuclear medicine. Radiopharmaceutical, okay, pharmaceut is relating to drugs, radio again means radiation, so they are radioactive drugs. Uh, centigraphy, sometimes I can't pronounce that one, that one ties my tongue. Uh, centigraphy is recording of radioactivity with gamma cameras. Tracer, Latin for track, and uh, that's a radioactive agent used to trace metabolic processes. Okay. We can also use x-rays for therapy. Uh, x-ray therapy and ionizing radiation works by damaging the DNA of tissues exposed to it. Okay, however, the x-rays often have to pass through skin and other organs to reach a target tumor, to spare normal tissues from the harmful side effects of x-rays. Narrow radiation beams are aimed from several angles to intersect at the target tumor. This provides a much larger local dose to the tumor than the surrounding healthy tissues. It's also common to combine x-ray therapy with surgery, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, immunotherapy, or any combination. Um, these are some of the typical types of radiation therapy. Conventional external beam radiation therapy consists of a single beam of radiation delivered to a tumor from several directions. Um, again, radiation is going to destroy the tumor, but ultimately um, healthy tissue is going to be compromised as well. So one of the things that they will try to do is put the patient on a round of chemotherapy to shrink the tumor in size. Therefore, not as much radiation is going to be uh, carried through good healthy tissue and less damage occurs from the x-ray therapy. Uh, stereotactic radiation is a specialized form of external beam radiation therapy. It focuses radiation beams by using detailed imaging scans. Um, and it, just as it says here, in this particular way, they're going to, uh, 
if something is in stereo, then, you know, if you've got stereo in your car, you know, it's, it's bombarding the area. And in this case, uh, with your car audio system, it is bombarding uh, your uh, sense of hearing, your auditory sensation, and you get the best sound quality. Well, in stereotactic radiation, the tumor gets attacked from as many as, as 200 different angles, and that ultimately is going to minimize uh, the damage to any uh, healthy tissue in the area, and also it's going to allow it uh, to attack that tumor from multiple angles as well. Um, this is where the gamma knife comes in, and that's a very, uh, uh, you know, used a lot in this day and age. Uh, but we also see the cyber knife, the tomotherapy, and the true beam. But the gamma knife was one of the ones that I first heard about utilizing uh, stereotactic radiation. Three dimensional conformal radiation therapies resulted being able to delineate tumors and surrounding normal tissues in three dimensions using. CT or MRI scanners and software. Um, that allows more radiation to be delivered to the tumor and less to the surrounding tissue, which is still viable tissue. Uh, intensity modulated radiation therapy is the next generation of 3D CRT. Uh, again, this is for complicated tumors. Uh, it mentions tumors that are wrapped around crucial blood vessels or major organs. Uh, proton beam therapy has the advantage that the proton only gives up its energy when it hits the tumor and does not continue on through the tumor to hit normal tissue on the far side. Uh, very high doses of radiation can be given without adjacent normal tissue damage. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer to be treated by a protein beam, proton beam therapy. Uh, here's radioactive iodine, iodine-131, and again, we talked about how it can be used uh, for thyroid tumors uh, to decrease the amount of thyroid hormone being produced uh, in case there are benign tumors of the thyroid. Common nuclear medicine therapies uh, using radioactive iodine include treatment of lympho lymphoma, neuroendocrine tumors, and palliative bone pain. Uh, implanted capsules of isotopes, brachytherapy, are used in cancers such as prostate and breast cancer. Okay, that's the radioactive seeds that they're sometimes called to brachytherapy. Uh, radioimmunotherapy combines radiation therapy and immunotherapy. Uh, in immunotherapy, a laboratory-produced molecule called a monoclonal, excuse me, monoclonal antibody is designed to recognize and bind to the surface or of cancer cells. This mimics the body's naturally produced antibodies. In radioimmune therapy, a monoclonal antibody is fused with a radioactive material and injected in the patient's bloodstream. The antibody travels to and binds to the cancer cells, delivering a high dose of radiation directly to the cells in the cancer. Um, our word bank associated with uh, this includes brachytherapy. Brachy means short. Therapy is medical treatment. Internal radiation therapy delivered by placing radiation sources into the tumor. Hypofractionation. Uh, hypo means below. Fract means broken. Ination means process. Larger measures of a dose of radiation given less frequently. Monoclonal. Mono means one or single. Clone meaning cutting. AL means pertaining to. Pertaining to protein from a single clone of cells. Photon, Greek for light again, particle of light or other electromagnetic radiation. Proton means first, a possibly charged uh, unit of a nuclear mass. Radioimmunotherapy, radio means radiation, immuno means immune response, the combination of radiotherapy and the use of antibodies, monoclonal antibodies. Stereotactic, stereo means three-dimensional, tact, orderly arrangement, of course IC means pertaining to, pertaining to a precise three-dimensional method to locate a lesion or tumor. Okay, and that's our chapter for radiology and nuclear medicine.